Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2. Finally, we have a finals between the two, probably my two most favorite players right now. And if you don't already know who this is with two barracks and Reapers producing, let me introduce you to the Blue Terran, Micro Jackson, Beyond. On the other side, the Zerg player who does not respect your meta, your rules, or your personal space. Especially when it comes to his strategies. The final boss! It is Dark. I'm not sure which we're going to see today, but Dark has given Beyond a run for a whole lot of his money in the past. And in this finals, a best of five to decide whether he can do so again. Maybe one of the last finals we will see Dark. At least for a while, as he does have his obligatory military service coming up. Beyond has already completed his. He came back. People thought he's washed up. He's not going to show us anything new. And uh, while he really hasn't on that, uh, on that point, the old seems to be working just fine for him. So like, subscribe, and uh, let's get things started. Reapers to kick it off. Yeah, so Reaper's bounce and the Queen's around. He already lost one, but so far already plenty of damage done. Dark did not have any inkling of this coming. I don't even think he sent an Ovi to the... Yeah, he sent it across. So not to the front here. So he didn't see the Reapers coming until they showed up at his front door and started growing in number. Reapers already working their way through into the mineral line. They've, they've cut down a dozen lings. No queens yet, though starting to get some of the drones. The damage is adding up as beyond just bullying his way through to the mineral line. There is creep between the bases. Very important here. Transfuse to save one of the queens. And beyond will slip out. He lost one reaper, but has killed 14 zerglings and put a ton of pressure on. Dark is only at 23 drones behind this. Beyond somehow has a better economy while actively killing a hatchery with Reapers. And those Reapers, they don't have the building grenades they did back in Wings of Liberty. No, just the fancy schmancy ones that Beyond got nerfed twice in Legacy of the Void. But here comes Speed, the most important moment, trying to jump on those Reapers before he loses the third. I... There are not enough Zerglings. You need to outnumber the, the Reapers by probably three to four times. And especially Beyond's, as he knows exactly what angles to use. He's acutely aware the Zerglings are too. So minimizing the time he could get caught out. I'm not surprised. I'm not even disappointed to see Beyond kicking things off with this. Uh, sticking with the classics, because they still work. It's a little bit harder to pull off ever since he got him nerfed. The grenade cooldown used to do double damage and have half the cooldown, quite literally. Uh, and then Beyond beat, well, Dark in BlizzCon 2016. And soon after, well, oh my god. That was one of the most epic finals in StarCraft II history. I, I actually do have a, a cast of one of the most dramatic games from that time. If you want to go back after watching this entire video, uh, compare and contrast. So far, the Reapers have not done deadly damage. In fact, Dark does end up saving the third. So despite everything, despite 42 lings being slaughtered, he's kept the Queens and most of the drones. And Dark has bounced back with three bases of larva and some injects, of course. Dark has managed to keep himself together and absorb the damage from the Reapers. Beyond, though, is looking very solid back at home. He has plenty of SCVs, nearly fully saturated on two bases. Finished up double engineering base, starting one, one, and three, two, one. Oh, I really thought he would. He started two medevacs instead, which is a very beyond move. He had the money. But those two medevacs in that timing. Medevac Reaper, of course. Seems to be the choice for beyond. Ugh. <laughs> oh, I, I heard you like healing, so let me heal you while you heal. Yes, the Reapers can't always heal themselves in combat. And that is most of the army. He's adding some Marines, which have been building at home for a while. And there is a third command center. He found the money for that. And now Beyond going to keep the pressure on. That is most of his game plan, no matter what it looks like. Dark has a, a vulnerable third base. Cannot afford to let Beyond focus on that for very long. 
The first medevacs are on the way across the map right now. Spinecrawler repositioning to shut down any reaper jumps. Zergling counter. I don't think it's been spotted. Uh, or if it has, beyond. Oh, he moves to intercept. Some more zerglings in the center of the map. Cut down by the marines. With stim easily enough to get a bunch of them. And so far, 63 links to just 7 of Beyond's units. That number going to grow. The Baneling Nest, concerningly late here, as Dark adds his trademark double macro hatch. And Beyond adds his trademark pickup and head to the main. Here we go. Beyond sidles his way in. Looks to target down some of the queens, getting plenty of zerglings. One of the, the medevacs badly bruised. The other one, you may want to pick up and get out of there, and he does. But I'd say already solid damage done. Fifteen more drones on the way. Beyond is keeping the pressure, but Dark? I, I feel like he, he takes damage in all the places it doesn't really matter. He knows where he can absorb the hits, which Zerglings are pretty cheap. You can throw them away to buy some time, buy some space. He's got another base. He's got more hatcheries. He hasn't, very importantly, he hasn't lost a single queen. He's been prioritizing keeping those valuable units alive and draws the little mine in, hits the Terran more than the Zerg. Another mine hit obliterates everything in its path, including once again the Terrans. And those backhanded widow mines. Enough to help crush this push. Another attack coming in. The Queen's on the high ground. Spine on the low. He's just going for the hatchery here. But the Zerglings move in time, but... The hatchery. One. Oh, the tr What a save! What a Dark! Save! Again! He lets Beyond get so close to the point where Beyond thinks he's about to just take out a hatchery. But the transfuse comes in at the last, possibly the last second. And he holds on to the hatchery, yet again. Another group of marines reinforcing. Baneling speed just about to finish. Dark on his uh, shoestring budget here. Uh, try A uh, widow mine comes in. No detection. Absorbs it with a queen. She can take it. Eats a hit. Still hasn't lost a queen. A hundred zerglings and no queens. Just the true priorities there. Dark well loved by the monarchy. Oh, Widowmind once again turning towards the Terran's Banelings, crashing in with Medivac taken down as well. Beyond really laying the pressure on a great game one here. But Beyond not able to find the critical damage. Widowmind hits the Overseer, not much else. Behind this, more Hydra's Lings and Banks. No Hive Tech yet from Dark. Hasn't started any of the plus two. Uh, on the upgrades either. Still sitting on uh, all those hatcheries from the main. Never even took the gas. Very focused on the Zergling production. Beyond, on the other hand, started 2-2. He's got more mines on the way. Gone up to eight barracks, some of which are situated near his third. Factory added on as well. Supply depots, barring uh, some of the lighter counterattacks. And a fourth command center as an orbital. So a bit greedy or just giving himself some flexibility. A queen. Finally, will we see one go down? That might be the beginning of the end. A very long way from it, but still. Meanwhile, oh, now this one not going to be safe. Beyond finds the opportunity. Finally, after like five, six minutes of that hatchery being a few seconds from death, We'll go down. Dark will rebuild immediately. Baneling takes out the front chunk of units. Is there enough behind? Widowmind does some more damage. Targets down a Baneling. Just Hydra's left over. Another round of Baneling's coming up. All this is happening moments before 2-2 finishes for Beyond as the Widowmind's slam into everything. Another shot. Dark takes out three Metavacs with Beyond's Widowmind's. Dark turning. When, when the Zerg units won't cut it, borrow the Terrans. The Widow Mines, very much doing, uh, Jimmy, do we have the, we do. Beyond killing 11 Marines and three Metavacs. Really racking up the kills. Dark just there to watch. Still though, Dark doesn't have any Lurkers out. 
He's down on upgrades now, trying... The Widowmines are actually the most important part of his army so far. Able to overwhelm the attack on the left, but you already know that another attack is coming in. The drop on the right flank. Dark could cancel the hatch, doubt he will. Uh, still being targeted, maybe he regrets it immediately. As Beyond picks up and gets out, and immediately redirects towards the main. Infestors on the way, pathogen glands about to complete. They'll pop out with the fungal growth opportunity. But will that be enough? Uh, the queens. Still hasn't lost a queen. But Beyond continues to gain momentum. Dark has not been able to put together any sort of counterattack. Murders the Artosalope. The humanity. And uh, without a hive here, Dark still stuck on, on these mid-game units. If Beyond recognizes that, well then all he has to do, is that a fourth? Oh my, no, that's a Lurker Den in the middle. Already ghosts on the way. If Mion recognizes that Dark doesn't yet have a hive, he just needs to take solid fight. He needs to stop with the Widow Mines hitting his own units, slow down a bit, which he's already done, and take solid fights, because his units very simply will be better. Uh, assuming they don't get all caught in the same fungal or ripped to shreds by a couple lurkers. Finally, some queens will go down, but the Zerglings are moving. Another attack left, right, and on the back line. Another mine. Diffused. Over to the right flank. Fungal's thrown out. There's not much to follow it up, though. The drones may actually drag the mine hits into the army. But it does feel like beyond keeping this pressure on. The creep pushed back almost to the hatcheries, adding ghosts into the composition. Over to the right flank as well. A tank thrown into the mix. Just a single one, but that constant damage. Potentially target down the infestors. More fungals, though. Able to hold those medevacs in place as the hydras can potentially target them down. Another army, though, to the left. Dark getting pulled apart. There's almost no creep left. The banelings are able to crash in. The drops! Whoa, Beyond picked up, and Dark almost caught him before he got to the main. Hive is done. But very little back to defend. There's no queen. There's no anti-air for these badly bruised medevacs. The lurker den is potentially exposed. Here come the infestors. Once again, dragged off the line. Throws a fungal. That'll take two medevacs. The last one targeted. And that's enough of that, says Dark. But again, Beyond comes in the front. And shoots down the queen. Dark cannot keep up with the inexorable attacks from Beyond. Just overrunning him. Never a moment that he could really strike back. Dark, who loves the lurkers in the late game, never found his footing there, even from the Reapers. I've not seen such a, such a control of the game, especially against Dark, from really anyone. Maybe occasionally Maru, but Beyond in top form there. Every part of that game mapped out for him. Sure, some of the fights didn't go his way, but the war, very much so. A surprisingly consistent and and trend towards Beyond in that game as he just kept hammering the point home. And without the Lurkers, Dark without his key unit, you can't, you cannot just go Reapers every game again. Don't do it, Beyond. I kind of, I mean, obviously, I hope he does. But at the same time, how troublesome would it be if, if Beyond decides successfully that you can just go Reapers every... He's leaving room for, for add-ons here, uh, which needs to be done on this side of the map. Dark with eight. Pool first. And some gas, so mixing it up here, certainly. Drops the hatchery. How much gas are we getting? No second gas. Likely a speed opener. 
Always a chance of roaches. First reaper on the way. I think beyond rethinking his placement on the depot there as he realizes the add-on would have been blocked. Not a moment you want to give to a Zerg player like Dark where one second of lifting your racks could be disastrous. He's still mining gas after the first hundred for speed. It's Banelings. Oh, wow, I said that with such confidence that he dropped the Roach Warren. Beyond's like, did you just drop a Roach Warren? Dark says, how the hell? What a Sim City. Uh, oh, I th Beyond is talking about what Dark saw on his side of the map. And Dark's like, what? Why would you... Why are you talking? <laughs> Beyond successfully winning the mind game. Some Somewhat self-deprecating. Um, but Dark was... Unless he's mind gaming himself. Uh... Well, here we go. A forward bunker to defend the low ground. And I, I guess why not? It will be very... He saw the roach horn. So that is a, an incredibly key part. He knows the roaches are coming. So this is how Beyond is going to try to defend. He's... I've never seen anyone attempt quite like this. Because the big weakness is those add-ons on the high ground being so exposed. But at the same time, the low ground is even more exposed. Because it's the low ground. Oh my god, he, he does a quick push-up with the barracks to push the Ovi away and do some damage. What a cute move. Alright, I don't know if it's gonna work, but I love the creativity from Beyond. Concussive shells on the way to slow those roaches down. No Ravagers. Oh, I take it back. One Ravagers. Here come the Zerglings, though. Trying to take out the SCV doesn't quite do so. The low ground bunker, but a slight delay here. Dark really trying to bash his way through. Gets into the base. The supply depot lowered, but Beyond dodges the single corrosive vial. Wow. Okay. There's still several. He has concussive. Targets the... Gonna get a few extra SCVs, but... Wow, that was a solid hold from Beyond. He comes out with more workers. Also, this isn't a wall. I don't think anyone noticed until Beyond just sent his SCVs back through it. But Dark could have just run it that way with the uh, Zerglings. Then again, Beyond had enough units to shut it down. What a, what an impeccable decision from Beyond with that low ground bunker. A confident forward hold. Preventing it from getting any worse than up the, up the top of the ramp. And now Dark is left with the awkward scenario of just a bunch of Zerglings and a mediocre economy. On top of that, on top of that, Beyond still has a lot of units. He didn't lose much of his army in that fight. A Marauder, a couple Marines. So that means Dark is on this very thin timing. Beyond commits a scan and sees drones transferring down and a queen dropping a creep tumor. Both of which point directly to this scenario where Dark has to decide. How greedy can I get? Because Beyond feels like he can move out. It would have been an incredible mind game for Dark to be transferring those drones and faking like he was uh, teching up or, or building economy. But no, it wasn't a mind game. He was just building drones. And Beyond, the premonition and, of course, the preparation. Dark may just die here, as he committed almost everything to the early attack, and it just didn't do enough. Not even remotely close. Beyond's defense has been near perfect. With third base, he's gonna cancel it. Gets the minerals back. Beyond not committing up the ramp yet, but already denying that third. A scan shuts down the creep tumor, checking for another third. Nothing here. He's not going to go up the ramp. He'll get the Ovi. 
Dark. Trying to set up some sort of surround? That's just not enough. He has stim. No, I think... No. No. <laughs> Dark. A relatively decisive 2-0. Towards beyond. Wow, top form right now. Truly, the confidence with which he slapped that bunker on the low ground and then abandoned it. He never expected the bunker to be the the full um, the fortress to hold, but it, it slowed down dark enough that he couldn't come up the ramp cleanly. And the SCVs were pulled, but they held the line. And beyond, with more than enough army left over, just walks across and claims victory. And that puts us on match point. I hope you're enjoying, I think, a great series so far. But like and subscribe. You made it this far. Be awesome. Like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. I know most of you are subscribed, statistically. Uh, but tell a friend. And also, if you have a friend, send me some tips. <laughs> Moving on. Um... Beyond, he tried the Reapers again. And I will say, they were successful. They, it worked. He got the scout, he controlled the game. I'd call that a successful Reaper opener. They weren't the decisive factor, but they didn't hurt. In fact, I think he would have been worse off if he went for a more conventional, like, one racks expand. That is the benefit of going for the multiple racks early. All right, what do we have in store? Neil Humanity. No pool first from Dark. No mass racks from Bia. It's going to be a one rack six band. We're going to go back to what some might consider standard. First Reaper. Is that the first scout as well? Not that surprising. Beyond sends it across. Dark with his first Zerglings. And sneaking a drone out towards the third. Beyond does like to micro against those lanes. The most important exchange of the game. Will he kill one or two Zerglings? Dark, Mike going back. Oh, beyond. Uh, more Zerglings rotated into the fight. The Queen should be out momentarily. And she is. The answer? Zero. Zero Zerglings. Though, a hundred. I, I like how we can see the damage. Done. Getting about five Zerglings of damage without killing any. Dark managing it well. I'm pushing back the Reaper. He starts a creep tumor far enough back that even beyond is not tempted. To go for it. Starport. Ooh, wow. 1-1-1. One, one, one. Oh, it's so weird seeing it. I'm not used to saying it, but this is actually just your your classical uh, Hellion, reactored Hellion opener into Starport. Dark slip Zerglings by as that Reaper was. Oh, well, that's certainly not great. Raise the door. Oh my. And they just get into the base. Where even though the, the Hellion should clean them up. Well, this is way too much damage for six Zerglings. He delays the third. Gonna get another SCV. Oh, this is it's a bit of a disaster. Um Well that is really bad for me. <laughs> Not game ending by any means, but kind of an unforced error. It was a mule that was stuck on the supply depot that prevented him from raising before the Zerglings got in. There is no reason. Well, Dark 
off to the strongest start yet. So... That's certainly Dark gonna be thanking his lucky Starcrafts that he managed to pull that off. And that is a much more comfortable position. You got a full scout. Even if he didn't kill any SCVs, he got a full scout. He knows Beyond is very likely going for a Viking and or Liberator, as there's no tech lab on the starport. It's clearly Hellions. There's a third CC, so that means not a ton of barracks pressure coming up immediately. That means Dark can probably quite comfortably get up to 60, maybe 70 drones before really having any obligation to build larva-intensive units like Zerglings. Mostly Zerglings. And that means that when Beyond finally comes out onto the map, unless Dark has been obscenely greedy, there should be more than enough production and units and even creep spread to match him. These things have reverberating con consequences as time goes on. We got three racks now on the way. One, one, going for racks four and five to round it out. Dark, even more drones. We've reached the 60 mark. And counting, and another Zergling gets in. Just in case you weren't sure if he was going bio, well, here you go. Sees the timing on the reactor starport. Sees the barracks landing. The Liberator's back here because of an almost certain select all army hotkey. So Beyond definitely slipping a bit in game three. He didn't open Reapers. That's like, essentially for Beyond, that's like starting off your morning without breakfast. And six Zerglings in your house. Like both of those things. Not great for your just general demeanor. The wrecks are done, but here's Dark. Wow, two more. Ah, uh, oh, dark. He's got two more hatcheries, infestation pit, going up to eighty drones. The image of confidence and well earned between all the scouting info and the damage. Beyond. By the time he comes out onto the map, and now the zerglings are on the way. He can't, his medivacs aren't even out until Baneling speed is almost done. He's gonna have to micro his hard halves. And his marine's heart's out. Just to draw even here. That was so much damage in a very critical time. Dark at 82 drones, even sneaking a few more. And that, that reach to 80 plus drones may be the only thing Beyond has going for him in the short term. Which means the Zergling count isn't overwhelming. He's got 40, he's got 8 Banes, which is not an unbeatable number. But they're on creep, they got speed. The Widow Mines were cleaned up. Beyond getting quite greedy with his attack, but he has to take some risks. Hellbats on the way. Armory done, clearly. Queen's defending this. Beyond setting up for another attack. Dark, another base. Burrow on the way as well. I think more for the infestors than, uh... For the Banelings, though, I'd love to see it. But he's got 2-2, two, two, not too far behind Beyond. Beyond's at 72 SCV, so Dark does need to be a little careful, either with counterattacking or with engaging. Because if Beyond wins a decisive fight, momentum can shift right back towards him. One particularly solid Widow Mine hit can make all the difference in turning the tide. But here comes Dark with that big counterattack. Beyond trapped in a prison of his own design! The supply depots didn't lower in time. The Banelings crash through. And even a drone in the, on the action here. 20 SCVs down. Beyond scrambling. But the stream of Zerglings and Banelings continues across the map. Beyond completely off of it. He's back at home with everything to defend. But already his economy has been hurt badly. Zerglings and Banelings continue through. 
And finally, Beyond draws together enough units to defend. But by the time he does, Dark has started an ultraless cavern, completed that hive. Adrenal glands on the way for those extra high speed attacking Zerglings. And how much longer, how much more of a reprieve will Beyond get? Some investors on the way with path pathogen glands has already been done for a while. The middle of the map opened up. A few widow mines. A well placed liberator will buy some time. Two two about to finish for Beyond. He's definitely going to try to make an effort. Uh, another key part of when you're down this far economically. When you've been pushed back so much, you're not going for ghosts. You're not investing heavily in liberators. You're really just trying to get enough units on the field, which means Beyond's going to have to rely on Widowmines and Marauders in order to deal with these Ultralisks. Another, an additional point, Infestors. One bad fungal could easily break the army with the Ultras. Oh, oh, oh. They're, if you know what you're looking for, they're pretty obvious, but... Well, Widowmine's gonna try to thin out the herd. Do some damage to the Terrans. Titanus Plating is on the way. Just a single Ultra for now. Queen's gun down. Oh, beautiful targeting. And picks up and gets out. Beyond trying to hold the Watchtower. He actually drops Marines behind. Another attack. Widowmine's doing a great job. But fungles from the back line, not enough to cut into the critical mass of this army. Beautifully done by Beyond so far, but the Ultras show up on the field. Kindness plating isn't there yet, but another fungal! And he's gonna hold him in place so the Ultra can chop him up. The fungal's enough. And Beyond, he held his ground as far as he could, but from underneath it, the Infestors popped up and ruined his day. And now trying to drop out, but still, and Infestor with a fungal, the Ultra is ready to chop through. Dark dismantling the defense and overrunning the field. The Ultra is unchallenged. Widowmine's not enough and take out a medevac as well. Baneling's behind a GG. Dark takes one back. Yes, he got off to one of the best starts you could hope for. But he did capitalize on it. Beyond still with his amazing signature micro able to hold the line right up until the he found himself on the wrong side of it the the style points of infestors becoming critical in keeping beyond uh from overrunning the zerglings but still dangerous even when that far down beyond turned it around a bit but that doesn't mean that's the uh, that doesn't mean the series has turned around. I still think it was a little shaky, but beyond clearly uh, on point, even near the end there. Though, will we see, will we go back to the Reapers? Because he, he tried not Reapers, and it did not go well. It did not. Just a single Reaper, not nearly enough for beyond. A surprising lapse, letting any amount of Zerglings in, but especially the, the circumstances. Really... Well, that's part of Dark's mystique. Okay, he finds those timings. How many times do you see six Zerglings show up and actually do damage in a relatively macro game? It, it doesn't happen. That, that is something we figured out years ago. But Dark still finds a way. And he keeps himself in this series. Ugh. <sighs> The craziest part of these three games so far to me. Not a single lurker. Even that last game, when it looked like Dark had all the opportunity, he chose Ultras. Ultras are a finishing move, I think. Best used. They're a unit that, the longer they're on the field, the easier it gets to deal with them. Lurkers, the same is true, but not nearly as much, because... They still require a pretty technical response. Ultras, on the other hand, kind of brute force their way through. Right up until there are enough ghosts or liberators or tanks to stop them. 
Uh, but when combined with those kind of surprise infestors, mm, cinematic damage. Well, here comes just a singular reaper from beyond. I'm going to keep pointing that out until it becomes untrue. We'll see if those first zerglings can get nearly as much done. It was also a little bit of a, a lack of due diligence. The part of the reason you don't want to take too much damage on the reaper is to keep track of those zerglings. You should be able to keep the reaper in a spot where at least it sees zerglings trying to slip by, like right here. Um, but if you take a little too much damage or you back off even a little bit, then the zerglings can sneak by, which uh, Beyond is clearly watching for this time around. Yeah, you see, kind of rotating left and right. But the queen playing some zone defense here. And there is the risk. The Zergling slipped out. Now, they haven't. But Dark has put a thought in his mind. So. Uh, <laughs> pops the grenade. Let's himself pass. Papers, please. Here's my papers. Throws grenade. Widely considered a dick move, but Terrans don't care about that. Alien's on the way. Beyond checks the main and gets out. He's even checking around. It did some real emotional damage, as well as literal damage. That last game. Dark off to a solid start. Nothing going wrong. Uh, about even. Uh, no major damage from the Reaper. No slowdown on the creep. Always important. Not forced to make any additional links. So this is as good as it's going to go without doing a bunch of damage on the other side. So we're going to have to see how it stacks up against a very similar yet... No, nope, I take it back. Not similar. This time around... Three racks and no starport with two engineering bays and a third CC. So beyond not opting for that. Honestly, he didn't really use the starport in the previous match. He built a liberator and then just kind of select all army to back to his base. He never really sent it out to try to do damage. Dark is going to wander in with the Ovi. His spy balloon going to see three racks, the factory, and probably realize that medevacs aren't on the field yet. But they will be soon, and he's going to combine them with a whole bunch of marines. One, one on the way out of those engineering base. Roach Warren. Lair. Roach Warren. Hmm. <laughs> I had to, to kind of double back on that. Because definitely an interesting choice. Dark, the most likely to... And six gases. In total. He's adding five more right now. Hmm. Interesting. Is this a Nidus? Or just Mass Roach Ravager? He's left the rocks at 14 HP. I don't know if that's intentional. Okay. I, w I wouldn't put it past him, but... The rocks don't do any damage when they get taken down. But the uh, destructible towers do, technically. Not that they're... The only map that has those is Altitude. Zergling in the third. Spots the timing. That's about it. Plus one, plus one. Melee. Here. <gasps> burrow move roaches? Was that a myth? He didn't start burrow, though. Burrow move roaches without the burrow is just a fancy skin. It doesn't actually give you the burrow upgrade. It's one of the few upgrades in the games that really requires that sort of prerequisite. And he's getting them without... He may have misclicked it. He's running out of time to convince me it wasn't a misclick. <laughs> oh. Well, we will see. Once those roaches get their fancy skin, that, that they get these shiny horns on the top of their head. Which is another reason why you kind of want to hide it until that last moment. I think very clearly now it was supposed to be Roach Speed. But we'll see if Doc notices uh, once he gets that graphical update here. All right. 
setting up for an attack on the third. A whole bunch. We're in the dark cam now. I want to watch and see. Got eight seconds. He's not looking at it exactly. He's going to look at those roaches and no, I bet. And it's done. And he sees the roaches. And he's... <laughs> and he gets... Oh, okay. All right. And he gets burrow. Okay. And here's the thing. The unsawed, too. He's making turrets. He's making anti-burrow turrets. The... the uh, Sometimes, Dark's mind games, it's a, it, it was a si he was a sleeper agent in his own head. Okay, Dark got the burrow move roaches without burrow, and even he didn't know it. They activated the code word, and now Beyond has to worry about burrow move roaches. But not very much, as they don't have speed, so he can kind of just kill them. Well, that's a lot of Ravagers. Throws out the corrosive bile spray and pray here. And Beyond doesn't may have overestimated his capability to deal with all that, as the roaches, once they're in range, can still do their damage. Yeah, Burrow might- he might be a little confused as to why it's taken so long for the roaches to get here, but... The Burrow move may be making Beyond a little bit more confident than he should have been. Dark is at 200 supply at eight and a half minutes, even despite everything. Throws up the corrosive biles here. Stimming into the midst of everything, but there's too many miles for him to stand tall. More of them has to micro. It hits a few metapacks. The Terran army is thinning out. The roaches have their speed now. 11 SCVs down. The Ravager count is dwindling dramatically as Beyond has stood his ground, doesn't kill that last tank, and it's done so much damage in this fight. Oh my god, Dark throws himself up against it. But Beyond stands his ground well enough, dodging just enough corrosive- Oh my god, a bro move roach. That scared me. I didn't even notice. I uh, he's gonna pop up and try to kill the tank with the other tank, isn't he? I- Well- Oh my god, he saw the drop! Which is a little awkward, because these Ravagers are here, you can just drop on them. But that burrowed roach- uh, It's just- Doc, I think, forgot about it, just like the upgrade itself. Trying to make use of it, but... <sighs> well, the Zerglings get the wrap around. Oh, well, Corrosive Bows to knock it out. Still a whole bunch here. As Dark continues to hold down the R key. Or whatever he's using. I, mean, I don't know, maybe it's a controller button. Corrosive Bows still finding connections. Kills a Metavac. And the critical mass of roaches may very well be there. Plus two carapace about to complete. 25 SCVs down. And Beyond just didn't have enough, enough siege tanks. Not enough marauders. He didn't deal with the problem head on. And Dark just bashes through. Uh, another game where I think it comes down to Dark. Uh, uh, realizing that, like, at some point, brute force is the way. I love the incredible self-mind games that that Dark pulled off there with uh, accidentally or with the surprise. I'm not going to say accidentally. I'm going to say a unintentional surprise tactic because the greatest surprises are the ones you hide from yourself. Uh, Dark, just so many streets ahead of the competition. So if you've been enjoying like subscribe. I, I've really been hard, but YouTube keeps telling me your engagement is good, but it could always be better. Uh, so engage. Just as engaging as this series is. We're going to game five. I wouldn't have it any other way. I would have begun two games in a row with only one Reaper. Two losses. It's becoming a trend. And he's not building the racks on the low ground. He's not on the good side of the map for it, where the add-ons are protected, but... It's a command center first. So either way, he's going to mix it up. Beyond not finding a ton of success with that conventional 1-1-1 style. Uh, but instead, either end of the spectrum. Either mass racks or command center first. I mean, he's going to try it here. He, he had his fill of your more standard middle-of-the-road play. 
he likes to stand off to the side and, and start yelling, you know, like with a holding up a sign or something like uh, make Reapers great again or, or something that is sure to get people on his side and really uh, make them think he's a well-balanced individual. Except Beyon has never been a well-balanced individual as he's the only person you can directly attribute a nerf to. So even that in and of itself is ridiculous. Is this a 3 2 one, one? Wait. I don't even remember what... It isn't, by the way. Um, he, oh, he's not making a third CC. He is... At least not yet. It is two command centers into two racks. But it does very much look like he wants to follow up with medevacs and marines. Who would have thought? What a crazy strategy from Beyond. Probably Marines, the ultimate micro unit in StarCraft 2, have been from day one. And uh, many, many, many days later, here we are, and it's still true. A lot of Zerglings on the way, actually. Dark is going to try to punish Beyond's command center first. Beyond has gone for the double racks here. He will have a lot of marines, but... And, and he builds a depot to wall off the high ground, because he knows Dark well enough, and I think that is just part of the build, but... <laughs> hmm. It depends. There's a whole lot of Zerglings. Beyond's like, you making Zerglings? Dark said, accidentally lets his keyboard go. Stop it, says Beyond. <laughs> I forgot we had Maddox here. LOL. Uh, LOL, says Dark, as he runs up the ramp with Zerglings. Beyond started the chat, okay. And apparently he's gonna finish it. LOL, I'm busy. <laughs> he says, moments before the Zerglings end up in his base. But overall, I, I think still a solid defense from Beyond. He's only lost four Marines and one SCV. This was supposed to overrun him. But so far, Beyond and his stutter step have been impeccable. But the Zergling count is just too damn high. And Dark will be clearing the natural. He gets the rest of the SCVs and the Marines. A few more Zerglings were built. In fact, even, even more. As Dark, with the good old-fashioned Zerg Rush, just straight up punishing Beyond for not walling off that low ground. Medivac's on the way. I... he didn't... It, you gotta be a little upset about this one. Well... And then you gun down every Zergling. But I think there's a moment of being upset, closely followed by a moment of a smirking, at the very least, as you gun down every Zergling that Dark clearly invested in to try to catch you off guard. So, I don't try this at home. Don't try to expand without any sort of wall. Unless you think you can micro as good or better than beyond, in which case, go ahead, feel free, and also send me those replays. Ah. So beyond, he does lose a lot of SCVs in the first wave. It does slow him down, but now he's acting a little more timid. Not as confident moving out. If that second wave hadn't come in, I think beyond would have already picked up and head toward uh, Dark's main. And of course, that was eventually going to be the option. But the second round of links clearly. Uh, giving him reason to pause. Well, here we go. He picks up and threatens the main. This angle, always uh, a bit dicey for Zerg, as a, meta a set of medevacs here can either go straight to the third or head directly into the main. Gotta be a little careful, as 
without burners. Not able to evade those queens so easily. A roach comes out, picks up and juggles back. The overlord's watching for this, but units can only move so fast, even with a speed upgrade. Another medevac heading out to the north side. We have plus one infantry weapons for Beyond. Plus one roach attack, or missile attack, roach attack, and carapace. So Dark once again wants to go roaches up against Beyond. We'll see if he can handle it a little better than last time. I don't think Dark has as strong an economic footing to really springboard off of as he did in the previous game, though. So we'll see. Trying to gun down some queens. Into the natural as well. Not even combat shield yet, but probing for vulnerability. is going to see the Roach Ravager commitment. Picks up every marine and gets out. There's some Zerglings patrolling the main to deal with these drops, potentially. Third base is nearly completed for Beyond. And he has the tanks back at home, ready for any... Uh, well, eventually, inevitable counterattack. Middle base, dark, looking at, looking to take. Group of Marines, kind of missing. Where's the medevac? I think they're thinking the same thing. Takes out a Zergling. Beyond still looking for an opportunity, but not finding it. Dark has enough units well spread. Scrape spread isn't amazing, but he's sitting on a good enough economy to pump out the roaches and ravagers, and once again, it looks like he's going to try to bludgeon Bion. Bion has a lot of well-spread tanks. He's, he's retreated back towards his base, realizing this is the major threat. There's a single drop out on the map. He's even a little out of position. Dark could easily smash the army, and here we go. Roaches and Ravager. Corrosive Bile on two of the tanks. Takes them out. Zergling slows the distance on others. Another tank comes up. He saves two. A huge deal in this fight. As Beyond rotates to defend, but those tanks go down at the end of the fight. Corrosive Biles, but the Marines chase down the Ravagers. Some Corrosive Biles land. A devastating fight for both sides. But was it enough for Dark to break through? Because it's not always about the first fight. It's about the follow-up. And I think Beyond, at the end of the day, held strong enough and still has this drop out on the map that uh, he's not going to be too unhappy with it. He didn't really lose very many, if any, SCVs. And losing the tank count has given him reason to stay at home here. But Dark doesn't have a huge economy, and if Beyond can figure out that this is indeed still lair tech... He's not rushing Hive. He doesn't have Lurkers on the way. He's going to feel in a comfortable enough position, especially with 2-2 already started. Of course, Dark has already started his upgrades as well. 2-2 in production, nearly halfway done. Beyond in the center of the map, working on the creep, which isn't too far out anyways, but just got a little closer. Another drop to the north. Dark is going to have to cancel this base. There he goes. A 201 supply. He is maxed out, but on one of the least supply-efficient armies you can build. So, even though Beyond is somewhat outnumbered, that doesn't mean he can't compete, unless half his army is on the other side of the map. Beyond with a massive risk, and of course this is what we're doing. He drops into the main with most of his units, which leaves his base exposed at home, but he manages to pick up the tanks and retreat to the main, realizing this is a full-on base trade. Will Dark be able to defend at home and do the critical damage, or vice versa? Does anyone find a decisive advantage after this? Going into the main, he has high ground vision. I'm not sure how he got it there, but is able to throw those corrosive vials up. Beyond is closing in, doing a lot of damage on Dark's side of the map. Just huge amounts of units dying, but mostly for Beyond, it seems. Though Beyond body blocking the retreat of the roaches and ravagers dark trying to hold the main the 2-2 finishes moments before it's targeted 
I think Beyond gonna realize it's already done. He had the opportunity and he let it slip as Dark covered across the map again. A huge amount of roaches and ravagers. Beyond has been deflected at Dark's side of the map and now is retreating all the way into his main. Oh, the, the ramp. He has the high ground from the ramp. He targets down a siege tank. Plus two attack is done for Beyond, but can he hold the line? A drop onto the middle base. Dark is not dealing with this in time. Beyond desperately defending with every unit, but the roaches are already in the main. The SCVs are pulled. Beyond is down. He has no resources. He has to come home to defend, but there's no home to come back to. Dark is at his base again, and in this elimination race, they say don't base trade a Terran. But truly, at the end of the day, it's don't base trade Dark. As Dark rips Beyond's base apart before Beyond can methodically dismantle him, he just throws it into chaos, and as a god of chaos, Dark rises to the top. Beyond misjudging the situation by a matter of a few degrees. And that's more than enough of an opening for Dark to take three in a row. I have to point out that he did not go with the Reaper build in those last three games, and Dark took full advantage. Do I think it would have worked? I don't know. We may never know, but Dark completes the reverse sweep in a dramatic, exciting, I hope you enjoyed series in this ESL Cup Finals. Uh, I enjoyed it. I hope you did as well. Make sure to check out this video that Jimmy put up there uh, just for you. And I hope I made your day I, a big chunk of it, a little bit better. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill. It's about time.